Welcome hey. to the second annual Atari Homebrew Awards. And we're here with Erlen. Hey guys. And I'm James. And uh, if you're new here, and you might be, because we're presenting this year not only awards for Atari 2600, but also Atari 7800 and at 8 bit and 5200 as well. Wow. Yeah. Dude, that the fucking intro was out of control. It was so good. I already <laughs> swore. You uh, said I shouldn't swear, and I already swore. It's fine. The first line put, out of put, my mouth. Put a dollar in the square jar. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, I screwed it up. It's already over. No show. <laughs> yeah. But we've stepped up our game here with our, our technology. Uh, we've got 4K cameras. Not yeah. broadcasting in 4K, but we do have 4K cameras. One of which the battery might not work and I gotta do a switch we'll see how but it's goes. all good one's a field camera one's sort of this one we use all the time but it still works out it's now so we've good. got an extra computer for our phone-ins for our award winners Dude, we got Chris man I don't we've know got you... a Chris as well <laughs> I don't know if we can we'll pan over to him at the yeah, end yeah you'll see we got we... <sighs> can't pan over Oh, okay. We'll, we'll get him to stand up at the end. Yeah, we'll, we'll bring Chris in so you can see his face. He's so good. And how are the volumes? They look pretty good. Awesome. So we are live and welcome. And this is very exciting because it's kind of, kind of a wrap up of yeah. last year because we're celebrating all the games, that, all the homebrew games that came out in 2019. Yeah, uh, I've been building towards it for a long time. Yeah, it's, and it's really fun, you know, watching these games, playing them throughout the year. And and then finally seeing them get finished, put in boxes, and sold. We, and we get award season. We get to just play all the best games for That's a while right. on the show, which is super cool. And leading up, yeah, leading up to this, we did four episodes going through all of the nominated games for twenty six hundred and fifty two hundred and eight bit and seventy eight hundred, and it was a really fun time, especially the new games like the eight bit stuff that we'd never played before. Um, so. First off, I want to thank all the co-sponsors for the uh, Atari Homebrew Awards. Uh, first off is Brian Mathern, who does the Atari Homebrew Companion, and you can find his uh, books on Amazon. And they cover, uh, they aim to cover every single homebrew out there for the Atari 2600. And he's well on his way. I think he's released three volumes so far, plus a holiday one and he's a homie he always puts down like the, the points and scores that we've got whenever he's on the show it's oh, the yeah. best man yeah when we get our high score he puts you know a you know five thousand points or j two thousand points and, and keeps track of it so many people in the chat which is yeah, amazing welcome to all the people I, watching I, this I live wanna, i want to list them all but there's almost too many at this point like they we look through and there's by. all the usual people and it's nice to have everyone come out for the like the special occasion it and is really james great. is better dressed than me it's so good <laughs> yeah well, i try you know. <laughs> and also brian mathern was very instrumental in putting together the lists of the 2600 games of the homebrew because he's the keeper of the list Yes, he keeps the track. Scribe. Of, he keeps track of <laughs> all of the games that were released uh, as homebrews throughout the year, uh, and then he passed them to me, and then we whittled them down. So that that's really amazing. Like it, it wouldn't function without that that master list that he puts. And together. it's a great book to pick up if anyone's interested in the homebrew scene. Yeah. It gets our endorsement in a big way. Yeah, because it has all the tips and tricks and instructions and screenshots and information about the. Uh, homebrew developers. It's you can leave it on your coffee table. You know, people starts, come by. Oh, oh what's this? And yeah, then they'll discover. <laughs> discover. Discover that you're into very obscure things. <laughs> uh, I want to thank also Albert Yeruso from Atari Age, who runs the amazing forums that pretty much everybody here watching lives on. And we wouldn't and be comment. here if he, w if he wasn't oh, here. It's he's such this, a central person. This wouldn't happen. This is the show. So many things wouldn't happen. Yeah, and this is where the voting took place as well in the Atari Age forums where people voted for your favorite games that this, uh, you know, now we're going to be revealing everybody's favorite games. And also Project Argon, which is a new uh, sponsor this year. Ah, cool. Who actually uh, paid for the awards. Which is great. So it's a burden Argon. off of my wallet because, <laughs> you know, last year I had to pay for all the awards, but it's really nice that somebody stepped in. And you can find out more information at markspace.com forward slash retro. And they're all about getting classic games and classic consoles on modern devices. So homebrew. Um, they're currently supporting Vectrex and Atari Lynx 
And 2600, 7800, and Coleco are on the short term list for being added next. And the 5208 bit are on the medium term list, so they'll be added later. And they will be supporting free distribution uh, and also paid and licensed distribution. So they're looking to put your homebrew games on their platform and you can get paid for it. So go check them out at their webpage and you can sign up for more information. Um, so what is this award show all about for those people tuning in? Well, this is the cumulative uh, games of 2019 that were released between January 1st and December 31st of 2019 in the categories of 2600, 7800, and 8-bit slash 5200 because those are pretty close together so I put them together and so what we did we took the full list and we had a nomination committee which I want to thank the people in the nomination committee a lot because they did a lot of work they played through every single game that was released this year and narrowed it down to their favorite top 10 of each category and then that get got passed on to you guys where you guys voted in the forums on your favorite ones. So that's how the process worked. And now we're going to be announcing the top ones uh, that everybody put their votes towards. And we've got nine categories. Um, and we've switched it up from last year. For the people who watched it last year, we've got uh, new categories and we dropped some other categories to really hone in what, uh, what really works and celebrates homebrew best. So um, the categories that we have are best 4K and under homebrew for the Atari 2600. It's a super cool category. It's probably it's, my favorite category. Yeah, and it's a brand new category. We didn't have it last year. Um, this is games that are quite small for the 2600. That kind of are like the ones that were put out when the 2600 were first released, like the 2K and 4K games that were really inexpensive to put out. So they're really compact games, sometimes don't have little title screens, yeah. sometimes are limited to just one, one screen. But the people who are on you know, the nomination list, they really packed in a lot of game. Oh yeah, and it's neat because it's like it's this really cool category where people have these limitations on themselves. Yeah. And then in that they end up producing these very cool games that just zone straight into gameplay and don't have maybe the fluff of all the kind of stuff, but they're just generally I think my favorite games I play on the show are probably four K games most of the time because they are so simple and elegant and yeah. and it feel like really in the focused spirit. On gameplay. Hell yeah. And so they have to really maximize the gameplay for the room they have. Um, uh, another new category, Best Homebrew for the 7800. And this one is a new one this year. And there's only three completed 7800 games that were put out. So we didn't need a nomination committee to narrow, <laughs> yes, to narrow it down to top already 10. already nominated. It's already done. You're all nominated. You're all winners. <laughs> um, and then uh, Best Packaging for the 2600. That's, you know, the cartridge, the box, the manual any goodies that yeah. we put in it. Some, some people get really elaborate and put in, you know, associated items, sometimes even toys with it. Or I remember one of my all-time favorites was Boulder Dash reading because it has, the in the manual, it has this, like, saga of their journey of trying to make this game. The, the history. I remember I, I cared so much more about it. I remember <laughs> it was one of my favorite moments on the show was just reading the Boulder Dash manual. It was unimaginable, like, decade-long saga of, like, I gave up, I tried again, I gave up. You know, it's yeah. cool when there's, like, a story inside the packaging. I think more, more manuals should do that and uh, that, really give in-depth behind looks to it and i mean we do that on the show and that's that's really yeah, but a nice i love thing to do. that's my favorite thing about like is like when you have like a cd or something you yeah. agree and they'll generally be like something that's personal you know it's very cool uh then best work in progress for the atari 2600 and these are up and coming games <laughs> that um aren't done yet but they're in the process and we wanted to take a look at those and celebrate those and say hey these are cool looking games that are in the prog in in the works and sometimes when we do that on the show, they're like decade, a decade old or five years old. And we put it on the show and the developer comes on the stream and in the chat. And then they start working on it again because they're like, hey, people really dig this game. And maybe they didn't get the attention that uh, it deserved. 
Which is the coolest thing when we can like give a little electroshock boost back to life of something that I think is tough too because sometimes you know games just get lost on the forum and it's they nice do. that there's because I think it's the hardest thing in the world when you put all your heart and soul into something and then you just get like crickets. Yeah, you know, even one, it, one like or something. It's yeah, like, it's just cool to have that stuff and it's neat that people can kind of like hopefully continue to sort of like revisit things because if yeah. you have any old projects and stuff like that you're looking at for 2020, I mean we'll play them on the show. It'd be amazing. Oh yeah. If you got anything you old projects you want to keep going because it's like it's such a long journey to finish a game decades sometimes usually not decades but it spans from anywhere from a couple months to literally decades yeah. like we played a game i can't remember which one actually a couple that are like over 10 years old and the developer started working on it like robot city from thomas yench and he started working on it again, and he's really close to finishing yeah. it now. And it's like it's really, really cool that that kind of things ha that kind of thing happens. Uh, next one is Homebrew for the Atari 8-bit and 5200. That is new. We only yeah. did 2600 games before, and when we played them on the show, who was it? was it you that we played the 8-bit ones? I think it might have been the 8-bit games. Wasteland. Wasteland. Was that one? Yeah, 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 I was there. So was that good. was really fun playing these really expansive, high graphics because you know the 8. 8-bit computer line of Atari and 5200 came out after the 2600 and they're really elaborate and still fun. You still have to have yeah. that core gameplay in it. No matter how good the graphics are, the sound, you always have to have that, that gameplay. But that's kind of the homebrew spirit, you know, it's so good. It is. Uh, next one's music and sound for the Atari 2600. Very self-explanatory. Yeah. There's some really talented people out there making cool tunes. And, and essential for what is going on like i mean the music yeah. and sound really and timing of things happening on the screen and it's such a limited um instrument to deal with i remember someone explained once that it's like there's no musical tones there's just <laughs> intervals of so you have to sort of find a way to approach it that's kind of creative and different it's not like you can just yes. you know put in like uh you know a midi track <laughs> and then you have something it's like it takes a little bit of innovation to get it and some of those things are so iconic yeah the 2600 at its core didn't have the tones properly laid out people have overcome that now yeah but beforehand they were like doo, 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 doo. <laughs> well, let's just divide up uh these uh frequencies by 10. with well, engineers it creating it which is so cool because it's <laughs> Not like musicians yeah uh graphics for the atari's 2600 you know there have been leaps and bounds of advancements for graphics and people coming up with new ways to use the 2600 for graphics and so that's a really interesting category uh, and another new one this year is a Atari, the Lifetime Achievement Award for the Atari 2600. Because, you know, there's all these people making new stuff. But yeah. what about the people who've been there for a long time? Yeah, the core. Maybe in the background that don't get the recognition, that don't, you know, the average person doesn't see putting in the work. Um, so we wanted to honor those people. And that's the only category that wasn't voted on by the public. It was just the nomination committee. Because the nomination committee is made up of developers people really know the community really know the the systems that uh, we're voting on so they've been around for decades as well so no they know really know the work that has been put in by these people that have been around for a long time so that's uh that was voted on by the, the nomination committee and last but not least best homebrew for the 2600 it takes all the elements oh, yeah. that we just listed off and puts them all together it's like overall what encompasses the game that you like the best and i really wanted to make these awards democratic i wanted to put out the votes for the public because you're the guys and women that play these games in the end that are enjoying these games and it really matters what you like and what you think and that's a big reward for these developers they not only challenge themselves by making these games but also want to spread the love they have for these systems absolutely to everyone else and so just some numbers here number of games that were completed in, for the 2600 in 2019 60 games wow were, were completely completed and said done or put out in a box so that's 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 quite a bit that's really really good uh completed 4k games 22 wow so people are still making those small games you know those are my people man yeah those are my people <laughs> uh work in progress games 
2019 is 71 wow. work in progress. There's a, a lot of up and coming games that you guys should and pay attention to. There's probably some work in progresses that it could be done, you know. They're really, <laughs> some are really some close. inches away and some are like, oh wow, you gotta keep grinding this out. Yeah. Um, and Atari 8-bit games, uh, 56 completed. Wow. And I'm really glad we added the 8-bit games because there's a huge community out there. It's pretty much neck and neck with 2600 is just a couple below i was really surprised like this is the first time uh dipping our toes into 8-bit games i really liked it and we got a bit of feedback too from people watching the stream when we did the 8-bit they're like hey why don't you play more of these games yeah. they're really fun the scene, yeah this seems to be the note universally about <laughs> play the more <laughs> yeah which is cool yeah and so we're gonna Move on with our first uh, first award. What Sounds, do you think? I like it. Let's do it. And we'll it. do some general chat in between. Oh, yeah, we man. And we got so much to get through. It's, we got to keep the train going. Keep moving. So I listed them in the order that we're going to be presenting them. So kind of a, a preview of what's happening. So the first uh, first uh, not award, first category that we're going to do is the best uh, 4K and under homebrew for the Atari 2600. Ooh. Let's see. Atari 2600, best homebrew, 4K and under. Amoeba Jump by Dion Alsthorn. Arcade Pong by David Galloway. Caverns by Harold Thiessen. Death Race by Michael Salzman. Do Re Mi by Vladimir Zuniga. Dog Walk by Vocha. Hugo Hunt 4K by Angelsoft. <laughs> Miss Galactopus by Rick Pryor. Space Game 2K by Carl Garrison. Water Diver by Zidane. Welcome back. Oh, that's a great list of games. Oh my god, this is like some of the best games. So if you want a good list of games, you just look at all the nominees. Yeah, I recommend all of those 4K <laughs> games, man. I was just like, this is a great year. So this is the award, if you haven't seen it yet. Yeah, man. Oh, backwards. Oh, is it? I mean, it's good, good viewing oh, for you. Oh, I'm just, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's actually completely see-through and transparent and floaty. That's so funny, because the green's in behind. I actually put you in front of it oh, in front of you. that's a good point. The stand up front You know what? I don't. Actually, let's go to this close and you can zoom in on it and yeah. get the focus. Go right in. Up, too, too up, close. up. Too close. Step maxed back. Out. Maxed out. Yes. A little further back. There we go. Back 
back, back. There we go. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay, there we got it. Okay. That's what they look like. So we have the envelope here for best 4K and under homebrew for 2600. And there's a. <laughs> and in third place, Caverns by Harold Deason. In second place, Space Game 2K by Carl Garrison. And the winner is Amoeba Jump by Dion Olsthorn. Woohoo! Fuck yeah. Oh, <laughs> you're, not, you're not supposed to swear. It's so bad. So, actually, can you move our window um, down to the corner here? If we can. Oh, never mind. We're figuring it out. Okay. No. Okay. Oh. So, uh, yeah, I'll just click off our window. Yeah. There we go. So, we've got Dion on the um, chat here on the uh, phoning in. Welcome, Dion. Let's switch over. Hey, guys. Welcome, Dion. How's it going? Hey, I'm not sure if you can see me, but uh, I guess you can hear me. Congratulations. Right? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's, it's just one really... second. We're going to turn you up here so we can hear you. So just okay. say some stuff. Uh, keep on talking. Bit. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. There. Oh, that's, that's great. Yeah. Excellent. It's better. So enough. congratulations okay. on your win for the uh, 4K and under best thank homebrew. You. Thank you, thank you. It's it's really, really a big honor, and uh, it, to me, it's great to know that the people like to play your game. Uh, it's it's really amazing. So thank you, guys. And by the way, the show is really uh, professional this way. I got a call back, Chris, saying you're up <laughs> next. Wow, cool stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. Well, we've got two professional filmmakers here, so uh, yeah, that helps out a yeah, lot in the professional helps. crew all putting it together. And it was really great meeting you, actually, at uh, Portland Retro Gaming Expo and yeah. uh, talking about your games. And, yeah, like, uh, like also, you're, I've got your interview almost ready to go, so cool. stay tuned cool. for that, everyone. I, I interviewed Dion at Portland Retro Gaming Expo 2019, and I've just been really busy. Apologies, of course. And um, but that's coming out really soon. So maybe uh, let us know a little bit about um, Amoeba Jump and any games yeah. that you have uh, also in the works. Yeah, yeah, I, I can talk a bit about how uh, Amoeba Jump uh, came to be, basically. Um, and and it, it basically started like a year of six years ago when I I created a game for the iPhone and for the Android, uh, and it's called Ring Diver. Uh, because I wanted to create a game that other people could play. And the thing is, it's not available anymore in the App Store because uh, I had to pay like 100 bucks every year to be in the App Store. And they're changing the iOS versions every year or so. And if you don't keep up, they remove your game. And I was like, okay, I have to create a game for a system that's not changing that much. And uh, so I basically wanted to create a game for the Commodore 64. Not, not even for the Atari. Um, <laughs> so I bought an old Commodore 64 and um, I bought like an online uh, course on, on programming the Commodore 64. And there was one tutorial on um, uh, like stable raster beam, something like that. And they said, well, now you have to count the cycles or, of all your code. And that's actually what, what programmers did for the Atari 2600. And then I was like, Oh man, that's that's really hard. And they they actually point me to this book. I'm not sure if you have a sh you probably showed it on your show, Racing the Beam. Oh yeah, I have that book. It's really really interesting. Highly was, recommend it. Yeah, it, it was really an eye opener for me reading this book and knowing how how hard it was to create games for this machine. It's like you got a lot uh, like 128 bytes of of RAM and like 4k of, of rom in the beginning it's uh, it's really limited and i think when when you limit yourself you uh get creative to work around things and so that's that's why i switched from commodore 64 to atari so i was like okay i want to create a game for atari and i i think the first time i i created like a demo of my game uh, i think you guys picked it up on the show saying oh this this looks good so it kind of yeah, I think that was when it to... was uh, Doodle Jump or something. And yeah, then it, it was became Doodle jump. Poodle jump and then Amoeba Jump. Yeah, and, and basically it, it started as a, a port of the uh, the game for the iPhone, which is called Doodle Jump. 
Um, and along the way, I changed a lot of things, so I decided to rename it to Amoeba Jump, something something different. Um, and you guys picked it up in the show, and you liked it, and you gave me feedback, so... Yeah, basically push me. Yeah, it's one to... of your favorite games. Man, it's, the, <laughs> yeah. it's definitely in the in like the top ten, probably close to number one. Honestly, just <laughs> all homebrew games I've played, and it's cool full circle moment because the first show I ever did, oh. um, we played Amoeba Jump on. Oh wow! Way yeah, back cool. when, and I, watching it evolve through its <laughs> stages was like heaven for me. Getting to see the like progression. I remember when we you implemented like levels where it would be only one colored block, and then that right. milestone of feeling like get there and i always whenever i'm at james's place for one of his like retro game nights it's like the game i play for definitely an hour like <laughs> yeah. each, every time yeah. it's like whenever if a movie jump was right here i'd be playing it yeah it's one cool. of those games you pick it up and you just you just want to play one more game one more game one more game it's so fun yeah great <laughs> great to hear yeah and that's what i like about the community the 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 the, the help you get from people uh the support um when I first uh, joined Atari Age, like almost two years ago, I was like overwhelmed with all the information there. Like there was like a free tutorial by Andrew Davey, like newbies for 2600. Uh, like, there was like an, an, a game collect by uh, Daryl Spice Jr. Daryl Spice Jr. Yeah, and it was yeah. like uh, how to create a game from A to Z, including music and stuff. Uh, uh, great and there was like all, all the information on the forums like um i got a lot of information from thomas jens which is he's still active and uh that that guy that he knows how to crunch code in as less bytes as possible he's he's like a wizard <laughs> i think yeah and and those people are still active so yeah, it's 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 oh, an yeah. honor to to be part of that and uh, it's really fun oh it's it is an amazing community and very supportive of all the programmers and what they do. Um, yeah. So what do you have, uh, what are you working on? What do you have coming out, coming up? I know, um, tell everybody it, else. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm working on, on two games at the moment. So one is uh, uh, Tower of Rubble, which is yep. a game I, I basically wanted to make because I want to have like more experience with, with Playfield, which is the background. Uh, uh, play field of a game you can create and I want to well learn more about that um, which I think you actually pointed me to a port of that game Tower of Rubble on the Commodore 64 yeah and I looked at the original yeah, when one I saw that sorry. posted on Facebook I said yeah. this can be done on a 2600 and then you saw that post and you're like yeah I can do that and you're, you're yeah. looking for a, a, a project to work on Right, exactly. And I was looking at the, the original PC version, which I think the animation is even better. So I, I, I decided to port that one. Uh, so that's still in the making. And I'm working on another game, which is one of my favorite Commodore 64 games, which I wanted to make for the Atari like for months and months, but I couldn't get it done um, using like 4K and 128 bytes. Um, so that's gonna be a project uh, using the, the the ARM chip, uh, but it's it's also gonna be great. So there are two games uh, at the moment that I'm working on. That's excellent. Well, congratulations once again for Amoeba Thank Jump, you. well deserved, and, and congratulations and thanks to again, all guys, the nominees for, for... that were in the category. Yeah, yeah, there were some good ones. I, I like Caverns by the. Uh, that's another Dutch guy, by the way, Harold Tyson. It's a nice game. Ah, oh, nice. And guys, yeah, I want to thank so you for, for making the game. Yeah, I want to thank you guys for having this show and, and uh, well, basically giving all the feedback to the developers. And uh, that's it's really, really helpful. Of course, there's a lot of people. Yeah, thank you so much. Where, uh, uh, yeah, thank you. And a lot of people were also busy with, with getting Amoeba Jump out. Like uh, uh, all the artwork was done by Nathan Strum and he didn't an excellent job there and also uh el jeruso from uh, atari age of course he's uh, um, he created all the boxes he created all the cards uh, so um, i owe him uh, big time thanks yeah. guys oh yeah he's great so thank you very much and congratulations we'll talk to you soon Bye. thank you thank Bye. you so much excellent congratulations let's put this over carefully on the shelf over here. Terrific. And we're going to be moving on to the next
category, which is best homebrew for Atari 7800, which is very exciting because it is another new category. But like I said, there's only three completed games. Interesting. There was a good list of works in progress games, but um, just three completed ones. Man, I'm think thinking if you want to develop games, maybe 7800 <laughs> looks like it's out. an untapped market of potential. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of power uh, in the 7800 and a lot of things you can do with it. Um, so there's good games when they are developed. So it's going to be uh, interesting to see how that progresses. Um, I don't know if next year will be more, but we'll see if we can keep that keep that going. And and maybe more games will be finished next year rather be than three. But at least we had a choice of three to go through. So let's take a look at the nominees. Are you ready, Chris, to cue that up? <laughs> Almost. There you go. Atari 7800. Best homebrew. Baby Pac-Man by Bob DeCrescenzo. Draker Quest 2 by Carl Otto. Ricky and Vicky by Penguinet. Oh, it's okay. There we go. And welcome back. Oh, doing hey. a lot of stuff. I was grabbing the award and Erlen's going to announce it this time. Hell yeah. So start from number three. Um, so number three for the best Atari 7800 homebrew games are number three is Draker Quest 2 by Clark Otto, Franco Dragon. Yeah. Um, number two is Baby Pac-Man by Bob DeCrescenzo or Pac-Man Plus. And number one <laughs> is Ricky and Vicky by Penguinette uh, Tail Chow. Congratulations. Yeah. So I'm going to give him a call. Hopefully this doesn't do T DTMF tones, which I don't think it does. There we go. Is he home? Hello. Hello, Osman. Yo, what's C up? Congratulations. You have won for best homebrew for Atari 7800. Oh, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> for Ricky and Vicky. Yeah, this is James from the Zero Page Homebrew. And you're and streaming you're, on the okay. interwebs at you're, the moment. It's, we're just holding up a phone to a microphone, so, <laughs> just so you know what's up. So congratulations. Thank you. So maybe just tell us a little bit uh, about the background of the game and how it uh, came to be on the 7800. Was it the first uh, iteration for Ricky and Vicky? Because I know it's also on Steam for PC. Oh, so with the uh, 7800 and Steam versions, they were done concurrently. So it started out as a 7800 game, but it transitioned from just being like a demo into a full production project. We figured that we have to actually uh, sell it on PC to have any chance of turning a profit. So um, we developed an emulator and did the Steam version alongside it. So like basically once it was decided that the game was gonna happen, then it was uh, both Windows and uh, 7800. Wow, that must have been a lot of work to, to do that uh, all together. Who else was in your team? So the, the core team was five people, including myself. And I got to thank the other four because like the thing wouldn't have shipped without them. So um, uh, Rosyat won. His handle is his name's Tad. He did the soundtrack. Um, he did was huge help. Also did testing. Uh, Tito, who manufactured our PCBs, uh, did a fantastic job. Like did all six hundred of them by hand in his living room. Wow. Uh, and my friend Holy Corey. Crap did the stage editor and provided a lot of help with the Windows tools and um, just Windows help in general. 
and my friend Andrew did a lot of design support and just generally like with the second set of eyes on the phone. Oh, wow. And somebody just mentioned that the 7800 emulator was updated just so it could handle Ricky and Vicky. Is that true? Well, the, the emulator was done from scratch, like just for the game. Oh. But, uh, so like it wasn't based upon an existing code base. Oh, but, wow. Like we, we eventually added support for other games like to make sure that we were uh, accurately replicating what the hardware did. Because mm. it's kind of wonky in some parts. Wow. So do you have any other games in the pipeline that you're working on, or are you uh, working on more systems to port Ricky and Vicky to? I don't think we're going to do any ports. The game was designed very, very specifically for the 7800 work. Like when, when the first design was done, um, it didn't have a system attached, but once it was chosen to do the 7800, like everything was very, very, very carefully designed for the hardware. So it would kind of be a waste to shove it on something else. Um, but as for like future games, uh, we want to do more stuff, but Ricky and Vicky didn't sell well enough in order to fund that. So oh, like no. we might do something, but it's not going to happen in the next few years. Yeah, it is quite an undertaking to make a game. How many years uh, were you working on Ricky and Vicky? So four years in total, like almost exactly. The the game shipped within a few days of the first build. Wow. Uh, like four years before. So it was like, I think the first build was like December 26, 2014. And then the Windows version shipped in December 26, uh, 2018 and then 700 was a little later in 2019. Wow, wow. Um, That's so, a... But like out of those four, the first year, it was just like uh, prototyping and tuning the mechanics. And then the next three were the content. Wow. Well, that's a long development cycle, but it takes a lot to make a game, especially with a small crew. So congratulations yeah. on, on winning the award for Best 7800 Game. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you for running this competition. Oh, you're very welcome. My pleasure, man. Thank you. Good so, work. <laughs> talk to you later. Yeah, see ya. Bye-bye. That's excellent. Yeah, it was really fun to include the 7800 because they don't, uh, you know, I, I, I have one and I barely played it, but yeah. I broke it out to, to play some games. I don't have Rick and Vicky. Maybe I should buy one. Yeah. Help them sell, sell the rest of them. I think they had over 100 left. They just posted yesterday, 123 or something. So get out there and support Homebrew. Yeah, and in 2020, I hope to see more 7800 games being developed. Yeah. And, I mean, if you're interested at all in doing it, I'd say jump in. Why not? Yeah. So the next uh, category we're going to be announcing is best packaging for the Atari 2600. Let's take a look at Atari 2600 best packaging. A Roach in Space by Vladimir Zuniga. Aardvark by Oscar Toledo Guterres and Thomas Yench, Design and Coding, Nathan Strum Graphics. Amoeba Jump by Dion Alsthorn. Dragon's Descent by Todd Fermansky. Galagon by Champ Games. Packaging by Dave Dries. Jaywalker by Ross Adkin. Pro Golf by Edward A. Smith.
Rally Racer by More Work Games. Spaceman Splorf Planet of Doom by Andreas Gustafsson and Vanya Utne. Wizard of War Arcade by Champ Games, packaging by Dave Dries. Atari, Atari 2600 Best Packaging. In third place, Wizard of War Arcade by Champ Games, packaging by Dave Dries. In second place, Galagon by Champ Games, packaging by Dave Dries. <laughs> <laughs> and the winner is Rally Racer by More Work Games. Congratulations. And I have a pre written speech here. Oh, terrific. Because otherwise we'd be uh, listening to Portuguese and we wouldn't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is from Leandro, who is, I believe, the uh, head developer for uh, Rally Racer. February 1st is becoming an important date for more work games, which is today. Oh, wow. In 1983, on the same day, Enduro came into the world, one of our favorite games and our inspiration. And that's a, another arcade game. Uh, in 2019, on this date, Rally Racer was released. Oh my God! Wow! February first. Oh, that's that's really, a full circle that's moment. Crazy. That's crazy. And today we are receiving this award. We are very happy. I would like to thank uh, Flavio Nunes, who did the game programming together with me. Without him, we wouldn't be at the awards. My wife Vivian, who created the user manual text. Wow, family. Yeah, family project. My daughter Amanda, who helped me pack the games. And the more work team, Darcio and Michelle e e Hitor Maciel. Rafael Cardosa, uh, that made the port, the rally racer for the Odyssey. Uh, Fred Quimby, Dwayne Allen, and the Batari team. Without them, we wouldn't be programming. And to my parents, who gave me an Atari 2600 when I was 10 years old in Brazil. That's who we all have to thank. And the Atari truly huge in Brazil. Um, also with the Sega Master Systems, huge in wow. Brazil. Um, finally, thanks to James and the Zero Page Homebrew team. Yay! Uh, Brian Mather, Atari Age, uh, game developers, game designers, for all the fans around the world to keep playing the Atari today. Leandro Camara at More Work Games. So congratulations to Rally Racer. Where's the reward? Oh, amazing, right here. There you go. Congratulations. And uh, we're going to switch out hosts now. Sounds good. So get the hell out of here. Will do. <laughs> Let's do it. Come on in, Tanya. Oh, let's get her shoes on. Yes. We're going to be moving on to the best work in progress for the Atari 2600. And these are games that are on your mark there. <laughs> these are games that are in progress, not quite done, could be at any stage that we're uh, released or put out like a new build in 2019 and as you saw heard in the beginning of the show there's quite a few games uh, that are in in progress right now so it was quite an undertaking to narrow them down to just a top 10 um, but let's uh, take a look oh and you can speak too <laughs> I'm like oh this is Tanya by the way no and it's okay and, we no. can go on we can talk after, <laughs> talk after? okay <laughs> we'll talk after okay <laughs> Um, so here are the nominees for Best Work in Progress for the Atari 2600. Atari 2600 Best Work in Progress Avalanche by John Champo Bag Boy by Kevin Kelly Cannonhead Clash by Blue Swimmer. <laughs> 
DK Arcade 2600 by Michael Haas and Bite Night. Ninjish Guy in Low Res World by Vladimir Zuniga. Penalt by Carl Garrison. Robot City by Thomas Yench. Tower of Rubble by Dion Ulsthorn. Zookeeper by Champ Games. And that was fun playing all those games again. I was, yeah, I was gonna say. Because um, once you look at them all together, the work in progress, and it's like, oh my god, there's a lot of talent out there. Yeah, and I think I think for sure we have the most fun playing work in progress games because you see the evolution of the games, where they start, how they evolve, when you get yes. new versions of them. Yeah. So I see think what they add in. Work them. in progress games are what the show is all about. Really, it's, it's yeah. giving you the opportunity to provide feedback and also getting being let that first person gets to play those games sometimes oh, that's it's true so too. much fun yeah we've so, had a lot of firsts yeah uh, anyway okay um so this for atari 2600 <laughs> best work in progress in third place it's penalt by carl garrison in second place it is ninja sky in low res world by vladimir zuniga and in first place the winner zookeeper by champ games Woo! Woo. Way to go! <laughs> <laughs> and we've got John Shampo on the line with us. Welcome, John. Oh, there we go. Welcome to the show, John. Hey, guys. Congratulations. You Thank you very much. Oh, we're going to get your volume up. One second. Hold on. Volume up. Okay. Oh, there we go. We're good. Right. So congratulations on uh, best work in progress for Zookeeper. It was quite, uh, quite a field out there in competition, that's for sure. Yeah, there, there are many uh, wonderful uh, w, um, work of progress games that I, I personally love playing. So uh, I was a little surprised that Keeper won, to be honest with you. I'm very uh, appreciative for that. So thanks, thanks to everyone. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, a lot of people voted for your game. It's, it's great. So uh, what uh, spurred you on to make Zookeeper? Was it a favorite game of yours in the arcade? It's relatively obscure. Yeah, yeah. Um, Zookeeper is pretty obscure. I I did not play it back in the day. Um, it was a uh, game I was introduced to when uh, on Mame way back when, uh, probably like five years ago. And uh, I really just enjoyed playing it. Um, um, and then I just got inspired after finishing Mappy um, to uh, to start on that game. Actually, I started it back in uh, November of 2018. Um, after on my way home from PRGE, um, I was actually inspired by a little glitch that we uh, um, encountered when we were doing the Mappy logo. Yeah, um, basically I was working with TJ and um, Nathan. We were trying to make that five-color Mappy logo, and we were trying to make the M a little bit wider. Um, to do that, we had to alternate um, frames of uh, um, for the M, and I noticed this little line in between. I went, oh, that looks something like something you use for a vertical uh, line for a brick. Of course, the first game I thought of was uh, Zookeeper, so, and here we are. So that's where, where it started. So, um, yeah, it's amazing, like a little mistake like that can spur on a whole game. It's like, oh, I can use that little glitch for a whole game. Have you thought of any other brick games that you can make with that glitch as well? Have you been looking looking for arcade games to adapt? Yeah, no, actually, I did start a uh, another game. I didn't, didn't announce it before. I'll just announce it now. I started on a 
to Hootencon. Um, that's, uh, I don't know if anyone knows what that is. It's a pretty obscure game as well. Yeah. So it's scrolling, it scrolls uh, horizontally. That also has a group pattern too. So I started that uh, probably uh, just a few weeks ago. Like, um, 10% through. Um, just uh, as usual, I just put this stuff together, send it off to Nathan, and try to get him inspired to do to do the graphics. And then we usually go from there. But, uh, wow. Um, but yeah, so yeah, Tuken, Tutankham, um was uh, was ported to the 2600, but it looked like nothing like the original, if I remember. It's just a vertical scrolling with a reflected or uh, um, um, inverted play field. Like it yeah. was really, really different than other yeah. versions. So, a little bit, yeah. I, I think for what they had, I think they, they did pretty good with it. So, um, so yeah, so this if we do end up continuing with that one, it will be uh, Tutankham uh, Arcade to, you know, to go along with the Arcade <laughs> uh, updates that we do. So, yeah. so that's it. So. Um, so excellent anyway, so I, congratulations on on the work in progress and and we we're just talking about the premieres that we do of work in yeah. progress and following them through of course the most exciting one for me was ever was galaga <laughs> when when we premiered that on the show and you didn't tell me even what game it was and yeah. <laughs> there was a passcode to get in it and the picture behind me was galaga and i've like a million galaga things and and I turned it on and was just like blown away, and then and then I put on my Galaga T-shirt. <laughs> but that was that was a really fun uh, kind of work in progress moment. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. No, that was. Uh, I, I have to admit, every so often I'll, I'll go and watch the uh, the YouTube video of that just uh, just to see your reaction because it's it's frightening. So anyone who hasn't hasn't seen it, I certainly recommend they go check it out. It's, uh, yeah, I should clip just, that out and make its own its own little yeah, video. Yeah, <laughs> oh my god yeah um, anyway well, congratulations john well deserved thanks. um if you don't mind it i have a few people I just want to thank for zookeeper so I just ramble oh yes doing so of course um anyway so first off i want to thank, thank nathan um strum as i don't know if anyone knows this but he's actually done graphics for all my games but it's not just the graphics it's always uh you know, I come up with this crazy idea and I send him the proof of concept and then he'll, he'll rein me in if it's something that's, you know, not, not working or he'll, uh, he'll push me to, uh, or inspire me to continue if it's something that, that is worth doing. So, um, with Zookeeper, you know, I put together that proof of concept, showed it to him and he didn't even know, um, I, I don't think he was uh, too aware of Zookeeper, but started playing it and really got into it and, uh, you know, stuff like that really pushed me to, uh, to, uh, Keep working with these games. So a big uh, shout out to Nathan. I um, also want to thank. Um, I know he's not online, but it's uh, Robert Vieira. He's uh, actually the Atari programmer that did the original sounds, uh, who also graciously uh, allowed uh, us to use his sounds in this port. Uh, sounds are amazing. So um, that, uh, that's a huge between graphics and sound. It's, those are the two stressful things for me when, I, when it comes to games. So Tableau's taken care of uh, is really really. Uh, godsend for uh, for this game i um, also want to thank um atari member um dutchman 2000 i wish i knew his real name but he's the one that secured the uh, um the rom or the uh the listing the code listing from robert um and allowed a lot of us to use it as well and i wanted to thank uh, thomas yance as well um he actually converted the code the uh, the listing into actual code and the driver that i could use so so that was great. Thanks, Tom, for that. Tom, obviously, he does a lot of other things um, and helped me on almost all my other projects. Mappy Loader is another thing, Avalanche. Uh, so um, thanks to him. Of course, I want to thank James, you guys, and Daryl Pay Trumper for debuting the game, getting people excited about these things because, as we know, this is not a full time job. This is something that needs inspiration if it's ever going to be done. So uh, Zookeeper is actually coming up there. So I'm, I think I'm 15 months into development. So. Um, um, wow, and yeah, that's why I keep sending you new Thank builds. You. So hopefully, uh, you know, you play oh, it, yeah. inspire me, then it gets me going for another couple of weeks. You know? <laughs> and, fun testing them out and oh, fun yeah. showing them off on the show as well. It's so much fun. Great. So that's it. Um, so, actually, one more question: Have you ever played or seen Zookeeper in the arcade? Have you I seen have. a machine? I, I've never yeah, seen I, one. I played yeah. it up at um, Fun Spot in Weirs Beach, uh, New Hampshire. So. Uh, Used to go up there with my uh, my kids uh, way back when. And, uh, they had like 500 uh, classic arcade games. That's where like Billy Mitchell wow. competed for Pac-Man. Uh, um, I think they actually filmed uh, part of uh, 
the King of Kong. I don't know if anyone's seen that documentary. They filmed it up there as well. So, so it's a nice. like a three hour, yeah. Yeah, it's like a three hour drive for me. So, um, I have played it there. So, so that's not bad. It's just as fun. Yeah. So we're lucky. trying to <laughs> very yeah. lucky. Yeah, we're trying to capture that the spirit of the game and the twenty six hundred version. So hopefully, uh, hopefully we we can do that. So awesome. Well, congratulations once again. Okay. Best work Thank in progress, you. and we'll keep okay. watching uh, Zookeeper as it uh, progresses. Wonderful. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Wonderful. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Hi. Bye bye. Okay. Excellent. So the next one is best homebrew. Oh, Ken's leaving. <laughs> best homebrew for the Atari 8-bit and 5200, and this is a new category. Like I said off the top of the show, and you weren't on the show when we played them. No. But no. you do watch the shows, so you um, you did see us playing them, and there's yes. a lot of amazing games in there, right, Erlen? Absolutely, lots of fun yeah. games, and uh, yeah, I might you know play some more on the show in the future because there's it gets really in depth, but they also have arcade great arcade ports mm -hmm. as well that aren't in depth, but you know because it's a computer based system, they can really can expand them out. Yeah, 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 that's very cool. Um, oh, actually, so don't need to get that yet. Uh, so let's take a look at all the amazing nominees for Best Homebrew for the Atari 8-Bit 5200. Atari 8-Bit 5200. Best Homebrew. Adventure Ponies. Daniel Blevins. Krizistov Zjambik. Burks 4. John Williams. Castle Defender. Martin Semchek. Peter Rudecki. Michael Rudecki. Gravity Worms, Krizistov Dudik, Jacob Slav, Kamel Valasek, Imogen, Franciak Ura, Peter Pastava, Lucas Bezdek, Jose Piera. Jet Set Willy 2019, Terence Derby. Monty on the Run, Krizistov Robo, Marek Konopka, Michael Splowski, The Rescue Expedition, Kamal Trzaska, Krzysztof Ziembik, Michal Brzezewski. Star Vagrant, Rafal Zemko, Rafal Branierek, Krzysztof Ziembik, Michal Brzezewski. Wasteland Michael Jeskula And welcome back. Had fun pronouncing all those. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I made her do I, the, I... the uh, announcements yeah, this year. really nice, by the way. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I, I'm just going to just straight out apologize for any any last names that I mangled in, in, in my uh, my read-through. But uh, yeah. Uh, so there was a tie uh, for second place, actually. Okay. Uh, Wasteland by Michael Jaskula. And also in second place, Jet Set Willie 2019 by Terrence Derby. Oh, those are easy names to say, relatively. <laughs> And in first place, Gravity Worms by Christoph Dudek, Jacob uh, Seslag, Camille Waluzek. 
Sorry. Again. <laughs> Congratulations. And uh, we have a statement or an acceptance speech. Gravity World. Woo! Yeah, we had a lot of fun playing that. And actually, um, going through all those games for those videos, I had to go through. Not had to. It was fun play, replaying all those games. And I um, was able to play them through. You know, I had to play them for a while to get all the different various footage. So it was kind of kind of fun to do that again. We're going to have to play more of these games. More, definitely. Yes, for sure. Um, so this is from uh, Christoph Dudek uh, for Gravity Worms. Gravity Worms is a result of the team's work. Special thanks to Vidal, who was responsible for the graphic design. Were it not for his stubbornness in refining the details, the end result would certainly not interest players because the competition was very strong this year. That's for sure. I would like to thank the organizers of the competition and all the voters. Not only those who voted for our game, it shows that Atari, which we remember from the childhood, is still alive. Soon we're going to publish an extended version of the game. Uh, eight musical themes, seven planets on each uh, to ten levels, uh, additional elements to be added to the games, and release it on a cartridge. Wow. Mm -hmm. We're also planning to provide a level editor for PC. That's really awesome. And in the next competition, we will start with the completely redesigned Hobgoblin 2. The project is also encouraged uh, by the author of the original. I hope that we'll be able to fight for a place on the podium in this competition. Yes, we'll be looking forward to that uh, game next year. Excellent. So that was a fun game to play. It was like, a, I think you'd really, really like that game. It's uh, your little worm and you have to solve the puzzle by eating fruit and not oh. drop yourself on spikes and you have to do it in a certain order nice. to be long enough to reach the exit it was it was a lot it's of fun so fun i yeah. loved yeah. it yeah we played we're it for a to, long time we're gonna have to play all the winners we're gonna have to have a winner's oh, circle yeah. so that'll be, that'll be a lot of fun yeah. yeah and so the next uh category is best music and sound for the atari 2600 Excellent. and you know music and sound can be like the intro music mm -hmm. um you know, sounds of firing, uh, sounds of explosions, sounds of movement or music in the game. Mm -hmm. Any kind of audible thing counts towards this. And this for the, did I say Atari 2600? Yeah. Yes. Um, I think it's one of the coolest aspects of these games. Yeah. And um, it, it sets the tone and the feel of the game. I mean, otherwise, yes. it, it, it makes the game itself a completely different experience sometimes, depending on what the music is. and. And mm -hmm. sometimes when you play work in progress and it doesn't have the music and then it does, it actually feels like a different game. So it does. Um, it's and and I'm just amazed sometimes. I'm not a musician, but I'm amazed <laughs> at what people create for these background sounds and the background music. So oh yeah, it's, it's a pretty impressive category I think to be nominated in because uh, there's a lot of talent out there. There is, and yeah. it's important in film as it is important in video games. Yeah. Um, because I, I recognize the importance of the music in film because I'm a filmmaker mm -hmm. and it really does set the tone for the film and the game. It's like mm -hmm. it could have light-hearted, bouncy music yeah. or it could have really dark music and it has to, you know, it can either complement the game or enhance the game. Mm -hmm. and, and So it's, it's really important. So let's take a look at the nominees for Best Music and Sound for the Atari Tour. Atari 2600 Best Music and Sound A Roach in Space by Vladimir Zuniga Aardvark by Oscar Toledo Guterres and Thomas Yench Design and Coding Nathan Strum Graphics Amoeba Jump by Dion Ulsthorn. Daredevil by Lewis Hill. Evil Magician Returns 2 by Todd Holcomb. Galagon by Champ Games. 
Sound and music by Ross Keenum. Miss Galactopus by Rick Pryor. Spaceman Splorf, Planet of Doom by Andreas Gustafsson and Vanya Utman. Spies in the Night 2 by Jared Gray West. The End 2600 by Carlos. Water Diver by Zidane. Wizard of War Arcade by Champ Games. Sound by Mike Haas with Ross Keenum. And the winner is, or actually third place is, um, Aardvark by Oscar Toledo Gutierrez and Thomas Yench, Design and Coding. Nathan Strum for Graphics and Packaging. In second place, Galagon by Champ Games. Sound and Music by Ross Keenum. And in the winner is Wizard of War Arcade by Champ Games. Sound by Mike Haas with Ross Keenum. And we do have on the line with us a Mike Haas. So welcome, Mike. There we go. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks, everyone. Oh, are you hearing us? There we go. Yeah. Congratulations on winning for Wizard of War Arcade. So um, I know there's two names here, you and also Ross. So let us know what, uh, what parts you did. I started uh, with the, the speech for Wizard of War on the ha half of the original game by CDS Games and with help from Nuki Shea and I was so glad that John Chapeau decided to recreate the whole game from scratch. I always liked the arcade game, uh, the coin op, and the most memorable thing was the speech and the organ-like, extreme organ-like sound. And for the Atari 2600, I set the goals really high for myself because there's a version for the Bally Astrocade, and they use the same sound hardware as the arcade game. And I really want that good. So you use the um, you use the Atari Vox for the for the speech uh, portions of the game. How many how many sections of speech did you do? Uh, the original game, I think it lists on lot. But I got over about sixty for a team, and wow! I had to match the shape of sound, the sound exactly the arcade game, which was a primitive sound chip at the time. Yeah, no, you did an excellent job, and it really enhances enhances the game, and it actually pushed the limits of the original Atari Vox, um, much so that. Uh, the original one doesn't really work <laughs> so much anymore with certain systems. And they actually revised the Atari Vox so that it would be fully compatible with uh, Wizard of War. Yeah, those strange uh, hardware bug creep up. Programming too, but I didn't notice that yeah. until after it was out in the wild. <laughs> I want to say that Shampoo and Games. And James, Tanya, Erlen, Darcy, and everyone from Zero Page. Really fun. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. And thank you for 
being a part of this uh, amazing game and being a part of the, the community. And, and sound is so, really so important to games, and especially in this game when you want to recreate the feel of the arcade and getting all the little pieces and, and the voice in there as well. It's it's an amazing and experience. And I do want to say for this game, we have a local arcade that we, we go and play and the, the coin-up version of Wizard of War yeah. all the time. And every time I go, I'm just, and, and, I, and I play also uh, this version, I'm blown away. <laughs> they feel exactly the same. Like yeah. they, they it, you might as well be playing it in the arcade, which I think is is an amazing accomplishment, and and the voice that goes along with that game is so distinctive, and it's such a big part of playing it on the Atari Twenty Six Hundred. So thank yeah. you. It, it's an amazing game to play, and the the sound is amazing too. So yeah. yeah. So congratulations, once again, and uh, thank you for coming on the show, and keep yeah. making those games. Yeah. <laughs> we will. Thank you. I was really surprised. Thanks yeah. again. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> bye bye. Thanks. Thanks. Ice Posta. And we've got a statement uh, from Ross Keenum. Because he also was part of the sound team for Wizard of War. Uh, he says, I, feel, I felt honored when I was contacted to help finish up the sounds for Wizard of War. Uh, it's a great feeling to see your work come together with the work of others into a fantastic finished project. A product. I feel very proud that mine and Mike's work is at the level of excellence that the community felt that it should be recognized with this award. Thank you. And he said, Mike, I think the firing sounds in Wizard of War is tremendous. The reverb is subtle, but it makes a very satisfying experience to mash the button. Thumbs up. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Ross. Excellent. Well deserved. Great sounds in that game. Wonderful. And all the Great nominees too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, are well deserved as well for the sound, for mm -hmm. some of the amazing music. Mm -hmm. The Daredevil's amazing music. Mm -hmm. And the music in Water Diver as well. Mm -hmm. oh, it's so driving and exciting. It's like. Really great. I love the music on the Atari that they're able to pull out of that ancient, it's amazing, that ancient chip. machine. Yeah. <laughs> that, that broken little chip. Yeah. It <laughs> only does weird sounds. So we're going to uh, switch up hosts now. Okay. So goodbye. Goodbye. And I'll be here's back your later. award. We're going to place it over here. And we're going to bring in Darcy. And we'll see how uh, you're going to stand back a bit. Oh, tag team off. Woo! There we go. And we're going to move over to best graphics for the Atari 2600. And this is anything you see on the screen counts as graphics. Welcome, Darcy. How uh, are you doing? Thank you. I'm <laughs> glad to be here. Happy to be here. Oh, it's wonderful. Yeah, it's the best feeling in the world. <laughs> and Darcy's been with us on the show since the very first terrible stream that we did up to the better streams now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the whole time. Good. Yep. And uh, yeah, well, the first ones were like super choppy and terrible looking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and we couldn't get things going right. It's just that I remember it in full like resolution, like eyeball resolution. Yeah, um, that's true. So it was, it was the, the, the video was great from my perspective the whole time. <laughs> we saw time. the game and the game yeah, looked great. There. The looked, sound was excellent. It was like real time. We looked 3D, yeah. very yeah. Uh, high resolution. So yeah. it was all good for us. Even if I closed my eyes as long as I bat it back and <laughs> forth, I still got that 3D effect. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> so let's take a look at the nominees. <laughs> for best graphics for the Atari 2600. Atari 2600 Best Graphics Aardvark by Oscar Toledo Guterres and Thomas Yench Design and Coding Nathan Strem Graphics Bass Fishing Tournament by Anthony Quinlan BitQuest 2 by Brian Wayne Shea Daredevil by Lewis Hill Dragon's Descent 
by Todd Fermansky. Evil Magician Returns 2 by Todd Holcomb. Galagon by Champ Games. Graphics by Nathan Strum. Spaceman Splorf, Planet of Doom by Andreas Gustafsson and Vanya Utne. Spies in the Night 2 by Jared Gray West. The N2600 by Carlos. Wizard of War Arcade by Champ Games. Graphics you by Nathan Strum. You just went around by the flower. Ha 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 ha. Welcome back. And wait, I oh, what? just Did... I, I just gotta say before you get like, into I, it, <laughs> like watching the video, I can't even believe how good those games look like i can't believe it. like i remember they're amazing yeah i remember thinking as a kid when i you know i had little oh sorry <laughs> uh, i remember as a kid thinking you know atari graphics they're just squares they're very bad. moving squares like i yeah. I, I, I yeah yeah they've advanced just every like every game after game after game i was just like shaking my head like i can't believe how amazing they all look <laughs> well they're all using like the latest tricks and all the yeah. things that have been learned over the 40 years that the atari's been going because people build on each game they're like oh i can use that trick from that game and yeah. that trick from that one i can you know have more colors in my guy i just have to change the colors each line rather than just the same color for the whole guy and it just you know 40 years later we have magnificent uh, <laughs> games put out now and yeah and it's it's unbelievable and really enhances it. I mean, the gameplay is at its core, but all the sound and the graphics really add on top of it that yeah, make it yeah. really good. And let's get to the winners. In third place, Wizard of War Arcade by Champ Games. Graphics by Nathan Strum. In second place, Galagon by Champ Games. Graphics by Nathan Strum. And in first place, the winner is Aardvark by Oscar Toledo Gutierrez uh, and Thomas Jens, Design and Coding, and Nathan Strum, Graphics and Packaging. I didn't even notice this before. Nathan Strum got first, second, and third place. Congratulations, Nathan. Let's get him on the line here. We've got an audio call from Nathan. Hi, James. Welcome, Nathan. Can you hear me all right? Yes, excellent. So congratulations on getting third, second, and first place. I didn't even notice that when I was putting together this uh, this envelope. That's yeah. That's unbelievable. Yeah, that's a little um, awkward, but it's, you know, they're all fun games to work <laughs> on. And, um, you know, with Aardvark especially, I want to be sure to call out Oscar and Thomas's work on the game. It was really a team effort um, and... Um, Oscar worked on some of the graphics on some of the, the screens in the game, and Thomas did a tremendous amount of work on the main display kernel, which uh, has all of the tunnels and the mountains and the background and the sky and the amount of uh, detail and depth that he was able to add to the environments of the game um, it is really impressive, and it really makes all of the work that I did with the animation 
that much better because it gives the aardvark and all of the the critters a, a really neat environment to to live within and i think it makes the game a lot more immersive yeah and, and if you look at the actual aardvark itself it's a huge sprite walks completely across the screen and the number of frames of animation that's in the aardvark is is absolutely unbelievable how many how many separate frames of animation are there for the aardvark um, I don't recall how many are in it total. There's, I think there's eight frames in the walk cycle alone, and then there's some different uh, small animations that the aardvark does while he's standing still and eating, and then there's the, the animation when he dies from eating something he shouldn't. And So there's quite a lot of frames in it. And um, again, Thomas deserves a lot of credit for making a kernel that allows the aardvark to walk on and off the screen which is not an easy thing to do considering all of the other display work that's going on at the same time. And um, mm -hmm. so it gave me a lot of freedom in terms of what to work with. Originally, the, the genesis of the game was that Oscar was trying to remake the M Network prototype that hadn't been released, but had been shown in public. And so he kind of started with that, and it was a very flat, sort of plain-looking game. And then as, the, uh, as he asked Thomas and then myself to, to be part of it, they wanted to both improve on what that game had been and take it more towards what the arcade version of Anteater had been like. And so I started working on a version of the Anteater from the arcade game, but that still was very simple and sort of uninteresting animation. And so they said, just do something new and they gave me a lot of creative freedom and a lot of ROM space to work with and so I just had a lot of I was just able to have a lot of fun creating it yeah and if anybody wants to see the progression of the graphics and that's really a fun thing is you can look back at the initial seeds of the game and how the graphics were and how they evolved through each of the uh, iterations of the works in progress and it's it's just night and day from where it started to where it ended up. So uh, great, great work on that game and congratulations. Thank you. Well, we've, we've been really happy to see all of the, all of the great feedback we've gotten since the game was, re was released at uh, Portland Retro Gaming Expo and the comments on the forums and in YouTube. And of course, when you guys are playing the game and, and uh, how people respond in the chat to it and just how you guys have enjoyed the game. Um, seeing that sort of feedback is is tremendous, and um, it really makes working on these projects worthwhile. Yeah, and really a huge shout out to the the community, like you said, where they really give a valuable, valuable feedback on how the game plays, how the game looks, things that can enhance the game, things that maybe even weren't in the original uh, game in the arcade that could make it better. And it's, it's really a great community that really gives back and, in, and it's kind of full circle. You know, they, they give feedback to the game and then the developers put it in the game for them to enjoy. And it's, it's one of the reasons that I made the show is because of that community and developers like you who are selflessly making these incredible games. Yeah, well, we do it for fun, ultimately, but of course, we're always happy when we see other people having fun with it, too. And, um, you know, I'm really accepting this on behalf of both Oscar and Thomas, because, um, you know, my work wouldn't mean anything if there wasn't a programmer to actually make it part of a game and, and, and a really engaging and fun game that we're all really proud of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is a, a, a team effort. Um, in, in the development side and in the community side. So it's great to acknowledge everybody who's part of it. So congratulations once again, and thank you for making the game, and thank you for being on the show. Well, thank you, and you know, thanks again to everybody at Atari Age who voted for Aardvark. Uh, we were really surprised to, to win this year, and we were really happy to win Best Work in Progress last year as well. And, uh, of course, thanks That's to right. Albert at Atari Age and... All of you at Zero Page for continuing to support the hobby and, and really get the word out there about these games. Well, thank you very much. And uh, congratulations, and we will talk to you soon.
Great. Thank you again very much. Thank you. See you online. And the next uh, award is for Lifetime Achievement Award. Let's get that out. And this is a new category. Um, like I said in the top of the show, I thought uh, we would... Oh, oh, Darcy's getting close. Go to the close camera. Oh, messing with Chris. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> And this is an award that I thought was uh, would be a fun, in, an important award to add to the categories that we celebrate because, you know, we get a lot of recognition for the games that are coming out and that are new and fresh. But what about the people who've been working for years and even decades behind the scene, um, either as a developer, uh, a programmer? somebody who does boxes, somebody who's involved in the community, maybe not in an outward way, but, and maybe their name is not really known except really in the tight-knit community. So we added Lifetime Achievement Award. So this is a summary of all the things that they have contributed to the, uh, to the community over the years. And so we had the nomination committee um, nominate 10 people, or nominate as many as they wanted, actually. Mm -hmm. And then we put that to the vote to the nomination committee because those guys are, know the community best and know the contributions that they've made over the years. And um, so then they put it to the vote. And here is the winner. And I'm going to get you to read it. And I'll hold the award. In third place. <laughs> Just kidding. <No. laughs> Uh, the winner of the Atari 2600 Lifetime Achievement Award is Albert Yaruso. Yay! Congratulations, Albert. And for those people who don't know, even though I did talk about him off the top of the show, Albert has been here for decades, decades behind the scenes, uh, supporting the community. Uh, he's the uh, operator of the Atari Age webpage and forums. He is really... Uh, the backbone of the community. He's the he maintains the gathering place of Atari Age, where people come together, share their ideas, share their games, um, and and talk with one another. He puts together the the games, the pa the packaging, puts them in the stores so that people can buy the games. And he's been at this behind the scenes for so long, um, doing this. Holding and it all together. Holding it all together. Yeah. And it's so, and I think it's very well deserved. There's a lot of really great people that were nominated for the Lifetime Achievement Award. So it was a very difficult decision. Yeah, yeah. But, and they were all deserving, but congratulations, Albert. And we do have Albert on the line right here on video. So let's switch over. Welcome, Albert. Congratulations on the Lifetime Achievement Award. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear us? No? Maybe. Can you hear us? <laughs> we can see you, so that's a good thing. <laughs> Here's Albert's face, <laughs> accepting the award. Hi, James. Um, just, I'm losing, losing my audio, audio now. Oh. Hang, on. My audio now. Hang on. We can hear you. We can hear you. You're all good. We can hear you. But he can't hear us. Tell I know. Him so we can hear it's him. good. We can hear you. <laughs> Hang on a second. Actually, sign to him. <laughs> OK. <laughs> The audio is contained in the other room. <laughs> it's running to the other room. Um, so I, I think this is a, a really neat uh, category to add. And, and we will go again next year. And, and obviously, he can't win two years in a row. So he's out of the race That's for it. next year. You've, been, you've, you you've achieved it. the Lifetime That's Award. It. What are you supposed to do? <laughs> Second Lifetime Award? you got to wait until His you've been reincarnated over. or something. That's yeah. right. He has to come back as a new person to That's win right. it again. Yeah. How are we doing? Oh, switch back over. <laughs> Can you hear us now? Hey, guys. Check, check. I One, two, Albert. I have the stream running on two computers. Yes. I have the stream running on two computers. Oh, I excellent. stopped on both of them, so I had to go run <laughs> and restart on the other one. Okay. Well, excellent. You're you're back in business. Well, congratulations yeah, so on winning the Lifetime Achievement Award. It is completely well deserved for all the incredible work that you do behind the scenes and supporting this sh the, our show, the Zero Page Homebrew, and 
the Atari Awards and doing Atari Age and putting all these games out and the endless lists of things that you've done over the years and decades. Oh, thank you. It's certainly an honor to <laughs> do with all the people that were nominated. And I certainly wasn't expecting this award to pop out of the, pop out of the blue. And, uh, you know, without the people in the community creating all these games or just answering questions on Atari age and all the information that's posted on the forum and elsewhere, I mean, you know, you know, there wouldn't be an Atari age to, to look after and all that. So, you know, I have to really thank everyone else. Uh, and I'm just one piece you know, of, of the puzzle as far as the community goes. And the funny thing is when I told uh, Albert that he did win, uh, like shortly ago, he's like, I didn't even know that was a category. Uh, <laughs> I'm like completely surprised by this, which was kind of fun. Um, so it took you, it, yeah. it caught you right out of the blue. So maybe tell us a little bit about what you do behind the scenes of Atari Age so people get an appreciation for what goes into the maintenance and you going to all the conventions and just everything that you put into Atari Age. Uh, sure. I mean, uh, Atari Age started back in 2001 with Alex Bilstein and myself. And at the time, I was just doing the, uh, just doing, you know, the website with the Rarity Guide, which is the big thing. And then uh, not too long after that, we went to the Classic Game Expo, I think, in 2001, and we helped a couple homebrew authors sell their games. I think we preserved Voice Enhanced, for instance, uh, Thrust Plus Platinum with Thomas Jens. Uh, and just from there, over time, we decided, hey, this would be a good, good way to actually make money to help support the website because Atari Age runs on a dedicated server and there's software costs involved and other things as well. So that store just kind of uh, snowballed over time. And I think now we've published a good 100 plus games just for the 2600 alone. Uh, so there's a, the store and bringing new games like in physical form, which is a lot of work. Each game is basically a small little project on its own. Uh, and you've got you know people creating boxes, manuals, labels, the programmers, of course, doing the game. Uh, and, you know, audio and graphics, uh, you know, all the different companies that help the printing of stuff and all the other the boards and, and uh, you know, all the parts that are necessary and, of course, the time to assemble them since they're not being uh, built in a factory, you know, unfortunately, like Atari was doing. Uh, but the store is just one aspect of the site. Then there's the main website, which is the Rarity Database, which we did most of that work back in 2000, 2001. Unfortunately, it has been updated terribly so in, in the last 15 years. And then the forum, which has grown immensely, uh, from when the site originally started. Uh, so keeping that online is probably one of the, the biggest time sinks as far as making sure the software was updated periodically. And that was a big thing I had to do last year because it was significantly behind. And, you know, it was months of preparatory work just to get that uh, upgraded and then actually do the, the upgrade. Uh, and then, you know, I've got a couple minor updates I need to do now that I'm back from vacation. Uh, you know, there's people to help with that. There's moderators, a lot of moderators and from global admins like, uh, CPU is and other people that, that help with that because I would not be able to, it's, a, it's impossible for me to read every single post on the forum, uh, much less even, you know, <laughs> fit to that unless I wanted to do a full time. Uh, and it's great to see just how the forum is you know, one of the biggest gatherings of classic gamers outside of probably Facebook. Uh, so that's all fun. And it just keeps, you know, like this server actually is on three di different servers, one for the database server, one for the web server, and then there's a development server as well. Uh, and those costs have just gone up. So that's why the store is a big help. Uh, and, you know, the shows is another aspect of it. You know, it's really time consuming to prepare for something like PRG. Uh, and then, you know, I've been driving up there and then back. So I get up there several days in advance, set up the booth with the help of others who thankfully come and help me. And then the show is just crazy Saturday and Sunday. And then packing it all up and coming back to Austin. And in the case of you know, the last couple of years, then I have to work on getting all those new games added to the store which is taking a lot of pictures, doing renders, things, write up descriptions. And then people like Nathan help put together videos uh, for the gameplay so people can see what they look like, not just static screenshots and such. Uh, and then, you know, once I put them all in the store, which this year or last year was December 8th, then it was just absolute mayhem trying to get all those orders shipped uh, before uh, like January 8th when we took off for Florida. And there were probably a good three to 400 orders just from just in that one month period alone, compromising on 800 plus games. So it was a ton of work we had to do on top of, you know, all the games that were built just for PRG. Uh, so January, the vacation was really nice. And I just got back two days ago. And now I just have, you know, I have to catch up on orders again. 
you know, lots of emails and PMs that I didn't have a lot of time to respond to in the last month. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of other things. You know, I need to upgrade the store this year, which you know I didn't get to do last year. But after getting the form done, it'll be good to be able to focus on that. And lots of other miscellaneous upgrades for the form and the main site as well. So that's that's I've gone on long enough now. <laughs> so that's all you have to do. That's that's it. That's so simple. <laughs> well, th thank you for doing what you do. I know it is a labor of love for yourself and and everybody else that's in the community. It's it's we don't we're not in it for the big bucks because there's no big bucks. <laughs> You're welcome, and I really appreciate being called what, out. What, it's really nice. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, and congratulations for winning a lifetime achievement award. And we'll ship that off to you. So thanks, thanks a lot for being on the stream. Talk to you. Thank later. you. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> and uh, now we're going to get into the last award to bring everyone on is the close one. Let's put the close one on me. Uh, Done. Good. And so okay, we just have an option there. Make sure that and this. Is good. Come on in. Come on in. You're gonna get a selfie. That's okay. Okay. Bring in your phone. Oh, I'm over here, so sneak in where you can get in. Where I can sneak in. There we go. That's, yeah, that's not bad. I'll Way better than last year. I think you're ducking down for some reason. Oh, you're hot. No, 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 no. No touching. So hot. <laughs> no, <laughs> touching. <laughs> no touching. No touching. <laughs> no touching. No pictures. Um, so this is this is the uh, best homebrew for Atari 2600, and this is kind of like I said at the top of the show. This is the award for the overall package of what the game is how it plays the graphics the sound the packaging the everything the absolutely everything that's in it and so it's quite um it's quite difficult to to say which one is your favorite is and this the challenge with art is it's that thing where it's like at a yeah. certain point all these games are so amazing that how do you pick because it's apples and oranges at a certain point for different reasons they're good it's like i like this for this now like, this is a totally different genre but i like both of them I, you know i just i have to disagree it's really easy <laughs> to pick you write them all down on yes. strips of paper and you draw one at random that is a very easy or, way to pick uh, you eat them one at a time, and whichever one is last, that one gets eaten. Yeah, yeah. And whenever you vomit, that one is... That's the winner. And that's how we've always done it, yeah. and that's how we'll always do it. Or you get the cats to represent one. I was going to say, one. which cat, like, which cartridge they vomit on first? That's the yeah, winner. Yeah, just lay them all on the floor. And Atari the will decide. be the decision. Yeah, that's Oh, okay. the cats aren't anywhere close for the finale. Right, you know what? Oh. I'm gonna... There's one. Oh, yeah, there's but he's one. sleeping, but, oh. you know, the oh, hero... Oh, there's another one here. This oh man, he's tucked the behind all the stuff. He's, he's sick. I they call this the tease, friends, where yeah. you slowly, <laughs> <laughs> you just talk. <laughs> and um, so, how how has everybody's experience been this year? It's been a big game, a big year for great games. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, and it's our second year of games, and we're heading into our third. It's First unimaginable. Year was like mm -hmm. we're navigating, don't know what's going on. We don't know. We're finding our way in the homebrew scene. But this year, we're very solidified and it's a lot more fun and uh you know we get past the games we get exclusive debuts of mm -hmm. games um yeah it's been a lot of fun what about you guys it feels yeah. cleaner to me yeah. now yeah. like it feels like the two like we've been doing more like two hour shows like things that are just like we go in we play the games a little right. less fluff which has been fun but then also the hangout days are really fun too where yeah. you just bullshit about like whatever <laughs> is happening yeah I know for me it's weird that like we're I'm at this place now where I have you, you I think there's people who have a relationship with me that I don't have with them it's this weird uh -oh. one sided <laughs> thing you know where it's like cause to me I just show up and play games with James and but it's yeah. like I, I'm like in people's homes like that's a strange thing and I would love right. someday to maybe meet some of you folks and like get to like have a drink and get to be more one sided and have a dialogue about this stuff because it's really that's where you go to the conventions the yeah. retro gaming conventions the Vancouver one mm, it's a bit smaller you may not meet any of these people I don't know yeah. anybody in Vancouver that watches the show so that's okay. you have to go to Portland. I, I gotta get my ass to Portland. That's, That's probably right. It's a great what... place, too. has a great arcade. It's yeah. really yeah. fun. And I got that CBD, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're all about CBD. <laughs> Any other comments? No, I'm just glad every two weeks I get to hang out and drink a glass of wine and play some video games every Friday. So yeah, I have a lot good. of fun, and I love 
I just love seeing how games evolve too. Um, just getting to play games as their people are working on them and they bring out new levels and they bring out new things and it's just amazing the creativity people have yeah. and it's just really fun to just be a part of that in some way so yeah I like but that. this year has been really good and it feels more solid like like it's consistent and like and you know every right. show we have a few games to play and and uh, yeah no it's been really fun I like the 12 hour stream was so much fun oh, yeah. that was one of the highlights of my yeah. year yeah. it was just this great time of when, yeah. when when I was drunk trying to do a four part game yeah. and like <laughs> failing and trying to do a Viva jump while I'm like hammered like, it was so good I hope that we do that again like that yeah, was, it was a really a great time raising money for Stella we raised thousands and thousands of dollars. I can't remember how much it was but yeah. Yeah. lots of money yeah. that was a fun time and, it, and for me the, the show is a great excuse to just set aside some time and play some games. Like, yeah. You know that's all you're doing during mm -hmm. that time. So, any comments? No? Well, <laughs> it's hard to go last because you guys said all the things. All the good ones. You were, you were like, oh, look at the fruit. It's so low. <laughs> Let's get that one. <laughs> but, like, what you said, you know, it, 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 the details of setting it up and running it smoothed out completely. Yes, that's So now it's just... It's just sit down and play the games mm -hmm. and enjoy the, the the games and yeah. Yeah, because we used to have to have we had a lot of struggles in the beginning with technology. Yeah. yeah. And those are all gone away. You can see by this stream, it's very clean. We didn't. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't think there's any problems this There time. were a lot of problems last year, if I oh, recall correctly. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, just, don't look at last year's. Yeah. <laughs> look at this one. This, this year is a good it was, example. was yeah, it was pretty yeah. smooth. Was but pretty like good. the games were great last year, but I mean. It almost seems like they're stepping up. Oh my god! Stepping up the competition because mm -hmm. oh just yeah, it, it, so many of them just blowing me away. <laughs> just, yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable! I, I'm excited for 2020. Like what you folks yeah. are going to come up with and what kind of creativity will happen. I'm and... worried for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah there's the pressure. I mean, the pressure's on. Bring it. But I mean, we can see the work in progress games. That's that's yeah. what's yeah. coming. And yeah. who knows what else is not even out yet, but those work in progress, it's, even half of those get completed. It'd be like mind blowing. Yeah. yeah, and just keep chasing your whimsies, friends. Like mm -hmm. seriously, it's like, you know, there's no reason to do this other than it's fun and it's life <laughs> yeah. and why not? You know, yeah. if you have crazy ideas, why not go Make for them it? Happen. I love this just like psychedelic vibes of all of the games. You like <laughs> these crazy ponies and like it's just very cool that you get this sort of pure imagination in these games yeah. and there isn't the sort it's of no like limit. Yeah, you're not stuck playing something that's been streamlined through like a committee to try to sort of like fit into a yeah. demographic. It's just nice that it's just like your guys' imagination. And that, that's what I love, you know, mm -hmm. is just seeing your guys' work. So uh, let's get to the nominees for Best Homebrew for the Atari 2600. Atari 2600 Best Homebrew. A Roach in Space by Vladimir Zuniga. Aardvark by Oscar Toledo Gutierrez and Thomas Yench. Graphics by Nathan Strum. Amoeba Jump by Dion Alsthorn. Bass Fishing Tournament by Anthony Quinlan. BitQuest 2 by Brian Wayne Shee. Caverns by Harold Thiessen. Daredevil by Lewis Hill. Dog Walk 
by Voicha. Dragon's Descent by Todd Fermansky. Evil Magician Returns 2 by Todd Holcomb Galagon by Champ Games Heist by Timothy March Hugo Hunt 4K by Angelsoft. Space Game 2K by Carl Garrison. Spies in the Night 2 by Jared Gray West. The End 2600 by Carlos. Wizard of War Arcade by Champ Games. You will never leave Lower Alive. Ha, 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 ha. You just went around by the Flower. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> oh, and I have the magic envelope, the pink envelope. Same, same envelopes we used last year. They're very handy. They look good on screen. Oh, okay. But and we erased all the, we erased last year's. That's right. Just, yeah. Reprinted new stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In third place. Actually, there were 17 nominees. Wow. wow. In this one. Because there was a big tie um, for uh, ninth place, I think. Hmm. It's crazy. Um, so in third place, Wizard of War Arcade by Champ Games. In second place... Aardvark by Oscar Toledo Gutierrez and Thomas Yench, Design and Coding, Nathan Strom, Graphics and Packaging. And the winner is of Atari 2600 Best Homebrew, Galagon by Champ Games. Woo! Good job! Clap, clap, clap. <laughs> Quiet clap. I don't know, are we supposed to clap? <laughs> <laughs> clap, clap, clap. Yay! <laughs> and so we have on the line the recipient of the best homebrew for 2600. John Shampo. Let's hey switch over. Oh, welcome, John. Back again. Congratulations. <laughs> best homebrew for Atari Thank 2600. You. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is uh, quite quite an honor. I was actually very, very surprised, too. So uh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, it was quite, a, quite the competition this year. Yeah, and with 17 games, and the, um, I, I think uh, Darcy had said um, everyone really stepped up their game this year. Um, and uh, it was... Uh, it was fun playing all those games. So, again, I was surprised Galagon took it home, but I, I do appreciate it. So thank you very much, guys. Yeah, yeah. Thank you to all the voters and uh, that voted for this for this game. Um, and it is probably it probably is my favorite game because um, I have yeah. a lot of Galagon for paraphernalia <laughs> in my game room. And, of course, you surprised me with it, not knowing that it was my favorite game when we de debuted it on the show. So it has a, a rich history on zero-page homebrew, so it's it's uh, quite a welcome surprise that it, it won for uh, best homebrew. Um, so maybe you can step us through really quickly uh, the development of Galagon from inception to release. Well, sure, of course. Um, yeah, I think in late March, I think I woke up with a I, a fever had just broken. 
And uh, <laughs> it came to me in a dream. Yeah, I've been, I'm sure a lot of people have thought about making reality for the 2600 over the years. Um, certainly, I'm, I'm one of those people as well. Um, it just hit me one day that um, I was going through some of my old code. I had uh, written a, a port for Galio back in 1997 for the PC. Um, and I happened to just stumble upon it on one of my old hard drives. And I was, it's written in C. And uh, as um, people may, may know, um, since I do the, uh, these games using the ARM, that's also written in C as, as well, a lot of the logic. So I started looking at the code and saying, well, I could actually port some of this over to... Uh, to the uh, 2600 version. So anyway, I spent an, an afternoon um, working on the main display kernel that would display the, uh, um, the uh, enemies in, in uh, position um, without flicker. Um, it's actually a kernel that um, I basically disassembled the kernel from Galaxian, which is an Atari uh, game from 83. Uh, so basically it's using the same exact kernel as that with a few more, since I'm um, using the arm, I have a little bit more time, I was able to add some stars and stuff like that. So anyway, I, I put together some pretty crude uh, graphics for it. Um, I don't know if I did it intentionally to make them look bad, because then I sent it to sent it to Nathan. He was impressed, but um, he immediately got inspired to to uh, put in some real graphics. So at some point, I should actually share that work in progress that, that I put together. Because the, uh, looking back, the uh, the graphics are pretty uh, pretty funny. So, anyway, um, Nathan came <laughs> I came never back saw to that me. version of it. So yeah, that'd be exactly. Yeah, so um, so that Nathan and I just worked tirelessly for like six weeks on it, um, getting it ready for the big reveal on Zero Page Homebrew, which um, was quite um, quite quite a um, event um, turned into an event anyway. Um, but before that, we had to get some sound into the game. It looked good and it played pretty good, but it was pretty quiet. Um, I'd reached out to Mike and asked him, uh, I suppose, uh, if uh, he would want to do the sounds, and he. Um, directed me to a thread on Atari Age from five years ago, um, and apparently all the sounds had already been done by Ross Keenum. Um, so I reached out to Ross, and he got back to me in a couple of days and gave me his blessing to uh, to use the uh, use the sounds in the game. And he actually uh, did a few extra ones as well. So between that, it was uh, pretty quick to get it together. Six weeks, we had something that was fairly playable. And uh, you know, again, I. I um, encourage people to go to uh, Zero Page Homebrew's uh, YouTube page and look at um, James and the team's reaction because uh, it's, uh, it's just one one <laughs> one picture's worth a thousand words for sure. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, so well, that's, yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, go ahead. Anyway, so yeah, so um, so that was basically the the, the um, standard game, um, and then we just started doing some iterations of that, and then I came up with some some ideas to do some uh, other gameplay modes, challenge mode and co-op mode. And that's where a lot of people came together to help uh, with the design of that. It was like first uh, major um, different play mode that I put in, into one of my games. Um, so that was, uh, I wanted to thank uh, Zero Page Homeru and uh, um, actually a few other people, uh, Steve Ramirez, um, Glenn, AKA the Gray Defender. Um, and um, you guys were really great um, testing the game as I worked on co-op mode and with your suggestions. And, uh, in, in the end, I think it came out pretty good. I also want to give a shout out to my son, Joey. Um, he, uh, I'm sure you'd rather be playing his Xbox. I, I'd drag him downstairs and make him play co-op uh, Galadon <laughs> instead, because that's the only way for me to play it, and, uh, and uh, Wizard of War as well. So um, that, was, that, was, uh, that was pretty fun. So. Anyway, um, so yeah, so certainly thanks to Nathan, thanks to Ross, um, thanks to, uh, I also want to thank the CDF team, um, Chris, uh, Daryl, and Fred. You know, you guys are always pushing the limits as far as the Atari can do, and uh, Champ Games was always uh, looking forward to the next uh, enhancement that you guys do so we could take advantage of that and, and make better games for everyone. So uh, I want to thank you uh, for that too. So. Um, that's it. And also, of course, um, I want to thank the Lifetime Achievement Award winner, Al, for all his uh, hard work in the Because, <laughs> uh, you know, as we know, making the game is, it's, it's a lot of it, obviously, but there's a lot that goes um, into actually getting the game out to people to play. And certainly Al um, does a lot on his end to, uh, to get the finished product to people and coordinating a bunch of other uh, projects at the same time. So, um, so thanks, Al, for that. And last but not least, I want to thank my sweetheart, Maureen. Um, 
she's actually around the house right now cleaning up, which I should be doing, doing my uh, weekend chores. But um, um, it's with her support um, and her in inspiration, you know, I get to get a lot more time to actually work in these games. So, uh, you know, certainly um, if anyone gets a chance, you know, just, you know, give her a shout out because uh, she definitely uh, she definitely makes a lot of these things possible. So thanks to her too. So. And looking forward to 2020 for, for a lot more um, a lot more games as well. So that's it. Oh yeah, more fun in 2020 with more more homebrew <laughs> games for yep exactly systems. Yep, exactly. <laughs> and um, you have you know you have Zookeeper uh, yep. coming out, and that's a work in progress, and many many more games in your roster that are to be done. To be started. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. Yep. When this, this spring we have Avalanche coming out, I just want to give a shout out to Tom for that. Um, he spent a couple weeks with me back in uh, last March um, working on that and uh, finishing that up. So we're looking forward to getting a, a, a label contest going. Um, Al will be putting that together. Um, so we hope, that, hope to release that. Um, Zookeeper is nearing um, completion as well. And um, we started Gorf Arcade, which we also um, we hope to get that done either by the end of the year or early next year. So, and of course, I always have like six or seven other work projects I'm working on as well, but uh, probably nothing that will be finished this year. So, <laughs> try to we'll try to spread them out so people can enjoy them. So, yeah, <laughs> yep, <laughs> excellent. Well, congratulations on winning the best homebrew for Atari Twenty Six Hundred for two thousand nineteen, and uh, keep making these awesome games. Thanks All right, so absolutely, much, John. Okay, thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye bye. Oh, my goodness. Congratulations to all the winners of all the games and also all the nominees as well. There have been um, so many games that you guys should go through the list, actually. Absolutely. Of the nominees yeah. um, for this year and just take a look and play through each one of them because they're all worthy of your attention and you'll have so much fun. Days and days of fun. Actually. <laughs> and um, so definitely check all of those out. And um, to wrap up, nope, wrong sheet. Oh no! Don't have to get anything. So we will be taking a tiny, tiny little break um, before we come back so I can take all this equipment that is up here <laughs> and move it all back down and set it all back up downstairs because I had to move all my hardware encoding up to the living room. That's boiling hot in here yeah it's really hot um so we'll be back on the 7th february 7th so six days from now not that long um i thought you meant like a half an hour and i was like wow we'll you be are. back in half that an is, hour <laughs> yeah see you <laughs> folks <stay> soon <laughs> it's very optimistic <laughs> um we're gonna be playing the exclusive world premiere of save gaia the Sime Age, which is a JRPG game. Wow. And it's a Friday. I don't remember which day it is. Do you know? Um, oh, is it? We'll figure it out. It's this if Friday. It's this Friday. Yeah, I believe that I'm here. This That's Friday. you? Okay. So be back with Darcy. Yeah. Most likely. <laughs> For, to play that game. And um, yeah, it's been really fun this year. Mm -hmm. And really fun playing all these games and being part of the community. And being able to celebrate all the work that everybody puts into these games. Not that there isn't room on the couch if you want to be there too. <laughs> come on over and Friday. Just come on over. Like, <laughs> that is there true. There is plenty of room. Like, we've done it before <laughs> and it was not a problem. No, I'm going to have to change the text and that's just too much. Yeah. <laughs> you need yeah, three names. Ignore, <laughs> ignore the James. How are you do ignore this? the James. <laughs> and um, thank you so much for everybody for making the games. Um, for helping the developers make the games, suggestions, for watching our show, um, for being in the chat for this and during the show and watching it on YouTube later. Hi, everybody on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And make sure you subscribe to all of our uh, social media. Um, so Twitch and, and it's Facebook. It's a huge back catalog YouTube. if you're interested. Don't go back too far. An unimaginable <laughs> amount. <laughs> go back one by one. Don't start at the beginning. Start from now and go backwards. It's the better way. You get used to the worseness as it goes. Get used to the worseness. <laughs> get used to the worseness. And I want to thank, of course, Chris over here mm -hmm. on the... Yeah, man, come on. Step in. You can just Say poke, poke your head in. Oh, I'll get even more. There we go. Yeah, Yay. this is Chris, man. Yeah. Chris is on the switching board. He did all the audio and video, which was flawless, as I can tell. Oh, my did it go God. flawless? Oh, I'm sure there's some mistakes in here. <laughs> uh, it looked flawless to me. Uh, nobody complained. Yeah. Um, 
So thank you so much for, for helping out this year and doing the switching. It really, really helped. And thanks to the camera people who were, nobody's on the cameras right now, we're just on wide. Thanks, yeah. camera people. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> camera. We try and keep it lean and mean and a small crew. And um, so we will, uh, thanks for hanging out with us uh, with this award show. And it was uh, really fun this year. It went very smooth. And it takes a lot of prep to make it that smooth. It's true. It's thanks <laughs> oh to my this God. guy. You Seriously. See, you see all those videos mm -hmm. that you saw in between? I have to record all those games, type out all those names, put place them individually on the screens, and do all the transitions. They don't just magically the most, appear. The most trying part of it, the, mo <laughs> the, the part that takes the most life force from him is intentionally dying. Uh, to make the uh, video work. He's like, no, I could keep going. Oh, I'll do it for you guys. <laughs> That's right. But, uh, but it is not fun a putting that together <laughs> and making it look a little bit slicker than last year with the thin lines and the better font. And, it's yeah. always refinement. Always. It's always like a game, man. It's, you go through yeah. iterations. How to make it better. And I always try and step up the game with the show and the awards each year. And Erlen had the great um, idea of doing that, the background there, out of focus. It's yeah. a fake out of focus. It's kind of fun. <laughs> so if you do the switch right now, I don't know if anybody noticed, but I wanted to point it out that if you look in behind me, it's out of focus. Oh, that's pretty great. But that it's is not, an excellent idea. It's not really out of focus. It's it's it it's done manually in in in, in uh, video editing. That's yeah, it's awesome. just trying to match a real lens because lenses so fall in a certain way. The yeah. background is depth of field, the bokeh, if that's you right. will. It's the small details. Yeah it's, yeah, it's all the little stuff. <laughs> so thanks for hanging out, and we'll be posting this on YouTube. You can watch it again later. Absolutely. And we'll be back on the 7th on Friday. Check your local listings uh, in the Atari Age forums for what time it is in your local territory. So thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you next time. Anybody else want to say anything? No, I'm no. just kidding. No. Anything. Okay. Anything. Bye-bye. Thanks. thanks.